you know, I meant to start filming and I always just seem to forget. Uh, by the time I'm in the middle of it, we're already deep in into it. What you're looking at is the insides of a Galaga cabinet. A very, very nice Galaga cabinet, actually. Uh, picked this up the other day. It was converted to a multi-cade with a 60-in-1 in it. Someone had altered the board there, and they jam and wired it through there. That's going up to the sound. We are stripping it all right now, and I just got this unscrewed so I can pull that out. And we can unscrew these pull this all the way through get these cables out of here get the wood out of there and we're going to put a real monitor back into this game and a real Galaga board and it's going to become a Galaga only again we have a customer who bought one of these from us and also a miss pac-man but they're going to get a different miss pac-man which is standing over there and you can't see it it's on that side of the room this one this one works just fine but it's really beat up and i've got a prettier one that i found him so we're going to do that for them. But that's uh, what's going on out here in the garage today. This is how you deconvert a multi-cade back into a regular single OG one-off Galaga machine. Not one-off, but one game dedicated, original, real stuff. It is miraculously nighttime. And uh, we've got a working monitor installed in its old brackets. We need to... We go ahead and put the screws back in it. This is the speaker cable. We're going to reattach that. Uh, and that this cable goes to the light. And uh, I actually have the light bracket sitting over there. And I should be able to do that. And then I got to rebuild the power cable. Um, but that should be pretty simple and pretty self explanatory. And we will get this thing turned on and see what happens with this old Galaxy board. I, I, this has got some rusty. Some rusty uh, chips on it. I don't have very high hopes for this board itself but to work right away, but I do have high hopes that we can make it work if it's not. So, uh, And I know the monitor is working. It's a little dusty and dirty, but it is working. And uh, we'll be testing it here in just a bit. Hooray. First, got to build power cable or we're never going to get any power. So we got sounds. We got no star field. Uh, and I've got no firing button. I can move left and right. I got no firing button. Hey everybody, it's voiceover time with Captain Retro. Uh, we ended up getting the Starfield fixed on this. That was a loose chip on the board. And there was also the fire button not working situation, which we handled because that was an easy fix too. There was some uh, cold solder on the board that goes to the buttons. There's a little sideboard inside the cab that goes to the fire button and the start buttons and stuff. And there was some dead solder on those connections. And once I fixed that, it brought the game back to life. And uh, here's me messing with this Miss Pac-Man. Uh, and the button was pushed down already. It's stuck and old. But look, we got Miss Pac-Man. Hooray for us. And hooray for this old tube. Once it warmed up, it, it's looking good. I'm going to leave it running for a couple hours and see how well it, it performs. It hasn't been turned on in 20 some odd years. So, you know, caps are old. But it needs a little bit of color work cleaned up in it. But, you know, red's red, blue's blue, orange, pink, yellow Miss Pac-Man with a red bow on a semi-orange play field with a red outline. And it's dungy and dirty. It needs a good clean. Hooray for us. So this is what it's like to sand a 40-year-old arcade machine. You just gotta get the orbital sander out, get you some good sandpaper, and do the task. Uh, it doesn't take too long. I spent maybe 45 minutes in all sanding the front sides of this cabinet. Um, I'm gonna touch up the back briefly and just overspray it with blue because it's not a big deal. But the rest of it's gonna get all new stencils and that's gonna be a whole video on its own coming up soon here on the Captain Retro channel. Hooray for you and hooray for me and keep watching because check out this slugfest. So this is the older footage, the original pickup of this machine I really didn't have footage of. I uh, had to go through a crazy situation to get this. It was a Facebook listing that was up for originally for $1,000. 
and uh, it looked like it was in a heap of trash on the ground, and it absolutely was. Uh, when I finally got there, it was covered in rat poop and things like that that you're looking at right now, and it was just in a horrible situation up in a crazy double-wide trailer up in South Carolina, and it was being neglected, and as was everyone in that family who lived in that house. Uh, it was a very scary situation, and when I first went in there, I was a little bit worried for my life. It was daytime, and I was alone, and there was at least five or six random weirdos in and out of the double-wide situation in this trailer park where I picked it up at. And uh, I actually walked away from it originally. It was just too far gone, I thought. It's just a hump, hunk of crap. And I was like, you know, I, I wouldn't even be comfortable offering you guys, you know, three hundred dollars for this let alone a thousand you know what i mean so i ended up walking away and on the way out the door you know i i, I thought maybe i should turn back and maybe offer them two two hundred bucks three hundred bucks see if they'd take it and uh but i the better of me got away with it and i got in my car and i drove off on home and actually i drove off on to the rest of the adventure i was on that weekend and uh, then in the car, maybe an hour later, I just got the bug that, like, if they would accept that, that I'd take it for for 200 bucks. So I ended up offering them $200 for this thing, and they took it, and I went back that night, late that night, on the way back from wherever I had gone to past their place in South Carolina. Uh, I can't remember exactly where I was going at this point. I smoked too much pot. Uh, but I ended up offering them 200 bucks for it, and they took it, and uh, they... It was a crazy loading situation. That's actually the card dispenser thing there. I need to dig that back out and see if I can put it back together because I think I have all the wires for it now. Uh, but anyway, you can listen to the rest of this tape. And if you want to go back and see the original footage of this, I think it's on the Southern Fried Gaming Expo episode from, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, a month ago, two months ago. Who knows? I can't remember things. That's not my job. But we'll get it cleaned. <sighs> and I'll just keep yawning. I think somebody makes side art for it. I mean, what happened back here, dude? Y'all light it on fire? What exactly is going on back here? May of 1991. Uh, looks like we're missing a, the speakers as well. The wiring has been cut for these. These are for, that's a speaker ground. So the speakers are missing. This is, this is gonna be a project, boys and girls. We got a project on our hands, but you know what? Uh, there may be a good bit of pieces we can take out of this thing to make it work. We're gonna try and rebuild it. I'm gonna attempt to rebuild your ugly ass. But right now it stinks and it's gotta get aired out. So that's what's going down in YouTube town. We are back out here working on a couple different things in the garage, but I wanted to show you all what's going on with the slug fest that we picked up. Uh, it's still filthy, it's still super gross, and uh, it's still got a long ways to go. There's there's no bat assembly. I've ordered some new pieces for things, uh, but there's I, I'm not sure exactly what all I'm missing. I know I need a plunger, it looks like, and a couple things, but we've got all that ordered. But what I wanted to show you all, apart from all the mess down here in this cabinet, we've got uh, someone wired a light switch in as the starter switch for it we are missing we got cables cut going all over the place we got things missing this is the new power cord or at least this is the power switch they wired into the power cord. i had to put a new power cord on it we went through and we cleaned up all the boards and we put them all back in and we crossed our fingers and earlier today i came out here and turned it on to show chris uh the the progress on it and I hadn't, the other night I turned it on, but I hadn't really looked at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this switch real quick, give it the juice, and look at there. Now, it's got no batteries in it, so it's forgetting its bookkeeping totals. But if you take it to the test report, it'll tell you some things are messed up. We got some ground shorts on row two, white and red, and ground short on row three. And uh, the time and date's not set. But other than that, it's ready to go. Get back out of the menu and it just turned to some kind of motor or something. We got some lights flashing. It's booting up and wanting to play. So we need to put the panel back on. We need to figure out what these wires go to. I need to print out the schematics. And I need to figure out, I definitely know we got zero pinballs for it. As far as I know, it's, it doesn't have any balls in it. So we got to order some balls. 
and they are three quarter size pinballs. They are not the same size as regular ones, but I think the pitching arm is going to work just fine. It looks like it's all together, but the bat assembly is totally taken apart. And I've ordered some pieces for it, but I, I definitely know I need more than what I've ordered. So we're going to get the schematics and go through it and order all the pieces we're missing. Uh, we're going to go through and check other things out and make sure they're up to snuff. But I think this thing's going to work. It also has no speakers in it because, you know, when you're a meth head, you have to sell everything you can find that you can sell. So they probably pulled those out and sold them separately. But look at the D&D &D working like a champ. Game's booting, game's loading. And I bet the game would play if I if I was able to turn it on and make it play. So I'm going to reach back in here and turn it back off with the power switch that we will eventually swap out and put a real switch back on this thing. But how cool is that, that it booted up and wanted to play? It needs a good cleaning, but this thing is savable. So it's been a minute, but I'm out here in the garage messing around with the Slugfest, and we've basically got this bad boy working again. I've got to put a couple more things back together. I've got to figure out the sound. we got some lights that aren't working up top. Uh, we've got a couple switches that aren't registering. And we've got one button here, the steel button, doesn't seem to be doing anything if I push steel. Although, I don't know if you can steal home in this game. But uh, we got the pitch. And I missed the hit, but it's pitching. So that was a strike, I guess. Foul ball, strike one. It considered it a foul ball. Either way, strike. And we're out. Press start to continue. I bought some stuff from a guy named Greg up in Canada. And he sent me... Oh, that was a terrible hit. He sent me uh, the entire wiring harness from the game. There's part of the old one on the ground there and some more of it torn apart here. Uh, we basically went through and rewired the whole thing. I've got, again, some more switches that are problematic, but it could just be loose wires. It could be a loose connection. It could be just dirty switch. I need to get in here and really clean it out and suss this thing out. But it seems to be fastball, changeup, curveball, and screwball. They're all working. That works. First player, start player, pitch hit, bat works. But the steel button's not working. Uh, again, so this could be just something simple. Loose could be the, the actual micro switch itself is broke. Uh, and we don't have any sound. I know that we're missing a speaker in the bottom of the machine. I'm going to pull the one off of the uh, hard body cabinet and stick it in here. And uh, we're, we're just about done. Though. And then I'll decide what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to order some new artwork for it and make it look pretty and brand new again. And uh, But it's really close. It's really close. And I get the sound working, obviously. got to have that. Whack. Oh, we're out. Also, I need the little flap. There should be a little flap that pops out from this metal thing that kind of holds holds everything down. When the ball comes out, it lays back flat over everything again so the ball doesn't get caught on here when it's going, if you hit one straight up the middle. Uh, but we're getting close. We got the ramp working with the 3D printed ramp razor and lower. All the boards are working and doing their thing back here except for the sound board, obviously. Uh, and I do have a... Another WPC, this is a WPC system, and I have a board from a Twilight Zone that I'm going to see if it's compatible, and I'll swap in real quick and see if that helps. We've got some old bulbs back here barely barely lighting up, and it should probably be poking itself out through the hole, but I think that's the first time I've actually seen it get juice. Uh, we should have the knocker. There's a knocker up here, um, and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. The speakers aren't doing anything right now. And these extra lights that I've plugged in have not turned on to do anything either. Uh, but, you know, um, so far so good though. We're back to we're back to a working game, or at least a partially playable machine again. And again, this is the Crackhead Special. Uh, oh, we also got a brand new baffle that I haven't installed yet. But here's some more wiring stuff that i got from the fellow let's throw that on the ground for right now why not this little piece goes down in here i'll do that while you're all watching let's see if it turns on and lights up uh, you raise your play field and you, it's only got one ball in it right now which it shouldn't be able to fall out it's kind of locked in a place but stand that up for a second get the kickstand out Doot. all right and then this baffle is like a light board 
and it stops the ball from falling, you know, getting rebounded back and into the cabinet uh, when the between the table edge and it. And there's a plug. Well, <laughs> uh, the game is playing itself automatically right now. Let me dig that ball out of here now. Shit. Stupid game because I didn't stop playing it. So uh, it's like kind of like with a pinball machine. It's going to launch the ball automatically and eat your credits up. Let me, let me go ahead and turn it. Well, I'm just going to plug this light board in. So hold on a second. This little thing sits here like this. And then when you put your table back down. It might count that as a strike. Now we got a... Oh, we got another out. We are uh, up... 10 to, to nothing right now. I mean, we're playing the computer, obviously, so they're not going to get a chance to bat. Oh, we hit one up the ramp, but it did not go out, and that would be a, a foul ball, technically. I guess what that's called. If it, It'll give me a strike. It should. Yep, foul ball, strike one. There. Now, that was it. <laughs> if we can go replay that footage again, that ball just shot right in there. And uh, it should, there's a baffle. This little baffle right here belongs up there, technically. I need to put the screws back on it and get it back into place. But it blocks that off. It's like a little subway banner. I need to get the lights working in there and get it blocked back off. Uh, so you can't do that with it. But all in all, the game's working, and we need to figure out what we're going to do to cover that, because no one makes one right now. I can't seem to find one for sale. The, it, there, might, there might be one on the one my sister has. I, My sister, I gave her a play field for this. I might be in luck, and she has it hanging on the wall in her house, and it's lit up with Christmas tree lights. I actually got it from TNT Amusements a while back, and now I can actually use it. If it's got that flap, I might be in luck. Stay tuned, boys and girls. Stay tuned. All right, so I... Uh, back out here working on it and I just swapped the ROMs over to a known working WPC sound board and as you can hear there is background crowd noise and we just knocked in a double fuck yeah so the sounds working again and uh, really all we need is this little flap to call the game playable again uh, all my switches are working. We got fastball. Woo! That was crazy. We got curveball here. Oh, a little delayed on the reactions and stuff. Two oh, ball. I'm out. Damn, all of them are like change-ups coming out of this thing. Or curveballs, I mean. Oh, we're out. How sweet. Oh, that was cute that it played a little song afterwards. But hey, a couple more switches to work out, some more light bulbs to figure out. But now we got a sound. We got a playable game. And uh, we'll probably do the artwork and order some new side art for it. And sell it off. That's how we do things. Because it's telling you the ball's coming there and to get ready for it. <laughs> and then everyone wonders where I get it from. <laughs> yeah, likewise. <laughs>